Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In Move It Motion Planning plugin for Wiz, there's this handy tool for planning robot's position and orientation. You can use interactive markers to move robot wherever you want. I've decided to implement the similar feature in my robotic simulator in Unreal Engine. But first I need to find out how to do this inverse kinematics on the fly. And this will be the topic of today's video. Before we begin, I'd like to ask you to subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, leave your comments under the video and press like. If you like my content, you can support my channel. Your donations will greatly help me to develop my channel, my projects and create more interesting content. Thank you. So, I'm gonna send position, orientation, linear and angular velocity of this gizmo that I've created in Unreal Engine to the Inverse Kinematic Server and Inverse Kinematic Server will in its turn send me back updated robots joints positions so that robots and defector could catch up with gizmo transform. On the Inverse Kinematic Server side I'm going to use Jacobian Inverse Kinematic Algorithm to update robots joints positions. The idea is very simple. Jacobian is a matrix that maps vector of joint velocities to the vector of end factors linear and angular velocities. So, knowing desired spatial velocities of the end factor, we can calculate appro appropriate joint velocities by inverting Jacobian. And knowing these joint velocities, we can update joint positions. So, let's implement this in code. I'm going to use Robotics Toolbox for Python library to define my robot's kinematics model and to calculate Jacobian. Our main function will need current robot's configuration, also we will need desired linear velocity and angular velocity. This is how to define kinematics model of the robot using Denavit Hartenbeck parameters in Robotics Toolbox for Python library. Let's get our Jacobian defined at current configuration vector of the desired and defector spatial velocities. Inverse map from spatial velocities to joint velocities. And configuration update step. Let's see how this works in practice. Well, it was expected because robotic arm was at singular configuration and we tried to move it in impossible direction. If first slightly move robot away from singular configuration, the algorithm works very well. So, to try this algorithm in its pure form on a real robot, you need to carefully watch out robot singular configurations as well as configurations close to singularity. And you will need to switch to some other control mode to safely pass through these configurations. Let's see if pseudo inverse will be better. In theory, pseudo inverse should give the best possible solution in the sense of least squares. In particular, pseudo-inverse gives unique ve vector of joint velocities that minimizes the following error, where V is and effectors desired spatial velocities. Besides, pseudo-inverse is the only option for manipulators with more than 6 deg degrees of freedom. The problem with pseudo-inverse is that it tends to have stability problems in the neighborhoods of singularities. If the configuration is exactly at singularity, then the pseudo-inverse method will not attempt to move in an impossible direction. In the vicinity of singularity, the pseudo-inverse method will lead to very large changes in joint angles, even for small movements in the target's position. There's also damped least squares method for finding vector of joint velocities, 
which theoretically avoids many of the pseudo-inverse methods problems with singularities. This algorithm tries to find desired joint velocities iteratively using the following formula, where lambda is hyperparameter called damping constant, which needs to be carefully chosen. E is the position and orientation error which needs to be updated at each iteration of the algorithm, and I is identity matrix. The damping constant should be large enough so that the solutions for joint velocities are well behaved near singularities. But it, if it is chosen too large, then the convergence rate will be slow. For this method we will need desired position and orientation. This will be our error tolerance. Damping constant. Let it be 1 for now. And next goes our main loop. First I'll grab robot's current position and orientation. I'll convert orientation expressed in early angles to quaternion. Placeholder for the error vector. Position error and orientation error. Orientation error is a little bit trickier to define than position error. Next we'll check if error norm is less or equal to our tolerance, and if it is we break the loop. And configuration update step. And this is the formula that I showed you earlier. So, let's see how this method works. As you can see, it copes with singular configurations much better than pure pseudo-inverse. Ok, this algorithm is definitely much better, it is more stable and looks like it tries to follow prescribed trajectory as close as it can. But still, we can't be sure that this controller won't produce commands that will be beyond the limits of our robot. The ideal controller should be aware of the robot's constraints like velocity and acceleration limits, and take them into account when producing commands. And here comes inverse kinematics as optimization problem. We want to find joint velocities that minimize the following error, just like pseudo-inverse does but subject to the constraints that commanded joint velocities are within specified limits and we can add other constraints like joint position limits acceleration limits so we have convex quadratic objective and linear constraints and this is nice problem to solve using quadratic programming solvers okay let's try to implement this quadratic optimization theory in code We'll need third-party solvers to solve this optimization problem and I'll use PyDrake library for that. Let's grab the Jacobian. Here I'm defining our mathematical program object. This will be our decision variable. It will have size of 6, that is the size of robot's joint velocities vector. Let's specify joint velocities limits and placeholder for our desired spatial velocity vector. This is our error term. And 
Here I'm adding this error term to our mathematical program object, as well as velocity constraint. Next we ask solver to solve this constraint optimization problem. You can see the results yourself. This algorithm takes all the best from pseudo-inverse method, that is, if there exists exact solution, it will return this exact solution. If you are asking something impossible from the robot, it will return the closest solution it will find. And you can be sure that this solution will preserve your robot's limits. There is one drawback in the way we defined our optimization problem. It takes the desired and effective path as just a suggestion, and the resulting trajectory may deviate from the desired one. The better solution would be to define the optimization problem as follows. We want to maximize scalar parameter subject to the following constraints. That is, if it is possible, we want to move in the desired direction with the desired velocity. But if it is not, we'd prefer to scale down the desired velocity but still move in the desired direction. And it is better to stop at all than to deviate from the prescribed trajectory and to bump into something, for example. And of course the rest of the constraints also apply here. So let's try this method. This stuff will be left unchanged. Our decision variable, constraints on the decision variable alpha. The cost will be minus alpha, so minimizing the cost will maximize alpha. And this is how I define the constraint that I want the optimizer to give me joint velocities that would lead to end effect as desired spatial velocity scaled by alpha parameter. And of course let's add joint velocities limits constraints. So this will be my preferred method for doing inverse kinematics in real time. It is fast, stable and reliable. I'll definitely try it on a real robot. So I hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and press like. Also leave your comments under the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.